and continues the study of business accounting by discussing payroll accounting. Section 1 explains the major federal laws relating to employee earnings and withholdings. The first objective of the chapter explains the major federal laws relating to employee earnings and withholding. An employee is a person who is hired by and works under the control and direction of the employer. There are several common characteristics of an employee. In most situations, an employee works in the employer's facility, using the employer's tools, under the employer's direct supervision. An independent contractor works unsupervised, usually away from the employer's facility. This chapter discusses the withholding for an employee, not an independent contractor. An independent contractor is responsible for paying all payroll-related taxes related to income. What are the major laws relating to employee earnings and withholding? The most significant law is the Fair Labor Standards Act. This is sometimes referred to as the Wage and Hour Law. The law applies to firms engaged directly or indirectly in interstate commerce. The Fair Labor Standards Act fixes minimum wage and the maximum number of hours of work per week to be performed at the regular rate of pay. Hours worked in excess of 40 must be paid at one and one-half times the regular rate of pay. Social Security tax is a tax imposed by the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, FICA, and collected on employee earnings to provide retirement and disability benefits. The Social Securities, Old Age, Survivors, and Disability Insurance, OASDI, provides benefits for employees and their families, including retirement benefits when a worker reaches the eligible retirement age, benefits for the dependents of a retired worker, and benefits for the worker and the worker's dependents when a worker is disabled. The Social Security Act also provides benefits for a worker's surviving minor dependent children and spouse if the worker dies. The tax is subject to maximums, which often change. As of 2010, the Social Security rate was still 6.2%. The earnings base was $106,800. Medicare tax is a tax levied on employees and employers to provide medical care for the employee and the employee's spouse after each has reached age 65. The current Medicare tax rate is 2.9%. 1.45% is withheld from the employee's paycheck, and the other 1.45% of the employee's tax is paid by the employer. So out of an employee's gross wages, Medicare is withheld at the rate of 1.45%, and Social Security is withheld at the rate of 6.2%. The employer pays a matching portion. The Medicare tax does not have an earnings limit, so the tax applies to all earnings paid during the year. Employers are required to withhold income taxes from the employee's earnings. Federal income tax is an additional withholding tax which comes out of an employee's gross wages. Employees subject to federal income tax withholding may also be subject to state and or local income tax withholding in most states. There are a few states which don't require employees to pay state income taxes. Alaska, Washington, and Texas are examples. Employers must pay the following payroll taxes. State Unemployment Tax, SUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax, FUTA, Social Security Tax, one half of employees, Medicare tax, one half of employees. Only employers pay federal unemployment tax. Sometimes this tax is referred to as FUTA. The employee does not pay this tax. State unemployment taxes, SUTA, are taxes levied by the state government against employers to benefit unemployed workers. Sometimes this tax is referred to as SUTA. The FUTA and SUTA tax rates are applied to a taxable earnings base. We will assume that $7,000 is the wage base maximum. Employers get a credit for state unemployment taxes paid, applied against their federal unemployment tax liability. The net federal unemployment tax rate in that case is 0.6%, 0.006. In states where it is required, employers pay for insurance that will reimburse employees for losses resulting from job-related injuries or will compensate their families in the event of death in the course of their employment. The employer must keep a record of employee's name, 
address, social security number, and date of birth, hours worked each day and week, wages paid at the regular and overtime rates, cumulative wages paid during the year, amount of income tax, social security tax, and Medicare tax withheld for each pay period, proof that the employee is a United States citizen or has a valid work permit. Failure to keep proper payroll records can result in hefty penalties for businesses. Section 2 of the chapter deals with the actual withholding calculations and recording those calculations in the payroll register. The second objective of the chapter explains how to compute gross earnings of employees. Objective 2 of this chapter is to compute the gross earnings of employees. The first step in preparing payroll is to compute the gross wages or salary for each employee. There are several ways to compute earnings. You should practice computing these wages and salaries for each type of employee. Gross pay is calculated by multiplying the number of hours times the rate of pay, unless there is overtime involved. If overtime exists because the employee worked over 40 hours, the employee would be paid at the rate of one and one-half times the normal hourly rate for the time over 40 hours. Employers will withhold Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax from an employee's wages. State income tax, if applicable, would also be withheld. Objective 3 has us calculating Social Security deductions. Any wages in excess of $113,700 as of 2013 are not subject to Social Security tax. If an employee works for more than one employer, FICA taxes are deducted and matched by each employer. When the employee files a federal income tax return, any excess tax is refunded. The employer, however, would not receive any refund. To determine the amount of Social Security tax to withhold, multiply the taxable wages by the Social Security tax rate and round off to the nearest cent. Remember that anything above the maximum wages is not subject to the tax. Remember that there is no limit on the wages subject to Medicare tax. In this pay period, $25.63 was withheld from all employees' wages for Medicare tax. A substantial portion of the federal government's revenue comes from the income tax on individuals. Withholding depends on earnings, frequency of the pay period, marital status, and number of allowances. An allowance generally refers to the number of exemptions the person is going to claim at the end of the year on their income tax return, Form 1040. To claim withholding allowances, each employee completes an Employee's Withholding Allowance Certificate, Form W-4. The Wage Bracket Table Method is the most common way to compute the federal income tax withholding. Employers choose the proper table based on pay period and employee's marital status. For Cecilia Wu, $30 is withheld from her paycheck for federal income tax. Most states and some local governments require employees to withhold state and local income taxes as well. Can you think of any other types of deductions which you could voluntarily have withheld from your paycheck? Objective 6 is to enter gross earnings, deductions, and net pay in the payroll register. A payroll register is a record of payroll information for each employee for the pay period. Alicia Martinez has one withholding allowance, and she is married. She worked 40 hours this week and is paid $10 per hour. Since this is the first payroll period for the year, there are no cumulative earnings prior to the current pay period. This figure is needed to determine whether the employee has exceeded the earnings limit for the FICA, the Social Security portion, as well as FUTA and SUTA taxes. In later payrolls, this column will accumulate the year-to-date earnings. Alicia Martinez's Social Security taxable wages are $400, and her wages subject to Medicare are also $400. Her wages subject to FUTA tax is $400. The amount withheld from her paycheck for Social Security is $24.80, and Medicare withheld is $5.80. Income tax withheld for Alicia is $19. She had no health insurance withheld. 
After all of the deductions, Alicia Martinez's net paycheck is $350.40. After the payroll register is completed, the columns are totaled and the register is proven. The third section of the chapter demonstrates how to record payroll information for the pay period. The seventh objective of the chapter explains how to journalize payroll transactions in the general journal. It is now time for us to journalize the payroll and the withholdings. We will journalize the payroll transactions in the general journal, although they could be journalized in the cash payments journal instead. We use the totals in the payroll register columns as the basis for our general journal entry to record the payroll. We will make two separate journal entries. The information in the payroll register is used to create the journal entry to record the payroll. Take a moment to review where the debits to the various salaries and wages expense come from. Each deduction is recorded as a credit to the appropriate liability account. Almost all businesses pay salaries, wages of employees by check or by direct deposit. Our next journal entry records the actual disbursement of paychecks to the employees. Some businesses set up a separate payroll account to further protect their cash account. Cash is credited for the net take-home pay. If a business uses a separate payroll checking account, then the payment process has two steps. A check is drawn on the regular bank account for the total amount of net pay and deposited in the payroll bank account. Individual payroll checks are issued from the payroll bank account. The bank electronically transfers net pay from the employer's account to the personal account of the employee. On payday, the employee receives a statement showing earnings, deductions, net pay, and the date of deposit. Employers must maintain individual earnings information in an individual earnings record. An individual earnings record is a record that contains information needed to compute earnings and complete tax reports. This information includes the employee's name, address, social security number, date of birth, number of withholding allowances claimed, rate of pay, and any other information necessary to compute earnings and complete the required tax reports. By the end of the month, Alicia Martinez had earned gross wages of $1,600. The earnings records are totaled monthly and at the end of each calendar quarter. This provides information needed to make tax payments and file tax returns. Chapter 10 discussed federal taxes that are paid by the employee. Chapter 11 discusses employers' payroll taxes and explains how to complete and file the required tax returns and reports. Section 1 introduces Social Security, Medicare, and Employee Income Tax. Our first objective of the chapter explains how and when payroll taxes are paid to the government. The payroll register is the source of information about wages subject to payroll taxes. Individuals pay taxes, but businesses also pay payroll taxes for Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment. Employers, regardless of size, must remit payroll tax payments via the EFTPS electronic federal tax payment system. The employer will match the employee's Social Security of $139.35 and the Medicare tax of $32.59. The information on the payroll register is used to record the payroll taxes expense. When the employer records his portion of taxes owed, he debits payroll tax expense, not wages expense. Payroll tax expense is debited for $171.94 and Social Security tax payable is credited for $139.35, and Medicare tax payable is credited for $32.59. Here is how the transaction would be recorded in the T accounts. Remember that the Tomlin Furniture Company must make monthly deposits of payroll taxes via EFTPS, either online or via the telephone. The tax liability which will be deposited is $1,995.52. When the deposit is made, Social Security tax payable is debited for $1,114.80. Medicare tax payable is debited for $260.72. Employee income tax payable is debited for $620. And the cash account is credited for the total amount 
of $1,995.52. Here is the transaction entered into the T accounts. The entry to record the payment of the tax can be made in the general journal or the cash payments journal. The individual earning records were updated at the end of each of the four pay periods using information in the payroll registers. Remember to cross-foot the totals to ensure that earnings less deductions equals net pay. Section 2 discusses unemployment tax and workers' compensation. Objective 6 discusses how to compute and record liability for federal and state unemployment taxes and record payment of the taxes. The Unemployment Insurance Program is a federal program that encourages states to provide unemployment insurance for employees working in the state. The FUTA rate is 6.2%, but a business may receive a credit of state unemployment taxes paid up to a credit amount of 5.4%. So the FUTA rate is reduced to 0.6% or 0 0.006. State unemployment tax, SUTA, rates differ from state to state and from employer to employer within each state. An employer's SUTA rate is based on his merit rating or experience rating, which the state has assigned. Under the experience rating system, the state tax rate may be reduced to less than 1% for businesses that provide steady employment. As long as the business pays its state unemployment taxes on time, it will receive the full credit of 5.4% applied to the federal FUTA rate of 6.2%, yielding a net FUTA rate of 0.8%. .008. Let's see how Tomlin Furniture Company records its federal and state unemployment tax liabilities. Two additional liability accounts are created. Tomlin Furniture Company submits for the SUTA. State unemployment tax is paid on the first $7,000 of annual earnings for each employee. Earnings over $7,000 are not subject to state unemployment tax. Each state sets its own limit. For our purposes, we have selected a state with a $7,000 limitation in annual earnings for each employee. See the next slide for details. Unemployment taxes are levied on the first $7,000 for each employee. For this example, let's assume that Cecilia Wu earns $560 every week. In the four weeks of January, February, and March, she earned $2,240, $560 times 4. In the fifth week of March, she earned the same $560, but only some of those earnings, $280 in this case, would be subject to taxes. $7,000 earnings maximum, less the $6,720 in earnings to date. This applies to each employee individually. Federal unemployment tax deposits must be made electronically. Most employers, regardless of size, must remit payroll tax payments via Electronic Federal Tax Payment System, or EFTPS. The federal unemployment tax is calculated at the end of each quarter. If $500 or less is owed, no deposit is due. Workers' compensation insurance is the amount that employers have to pay to protect their employees from work-related accidents and injuries. The rate of insurance premiums varies with the risk of the work involved. Workers' compensation, or some form of it, is mandatory in substantially all states. Workers' compensation premiums can be paid on an annual basis in a lump sum payment or through deposits. As you can see, the classification of work greatly affects the amount of premiums. Based on employee earnings for the previous year, Tomlin Furniture Company paid an estimated premium of $1,000 for the new year.
If the actual premium is more than the estimate, then the employer would submit the balance due to the insurance company. In the example provided above, the company owes an additional premium payment of $261.20. The balance due to the insurance company of $261.20 is recorded as a liability by an adjusting entry on December 31. If the company had originally estimated too high, then they may be due a refund at the end of the year. Note, an adjusting journal entry will be reported at period end to recognize any additional amounts owed or due back.